Keone. Hey, congratulations on the, the ravine. Thank you very much. So, uh, so tell us, uh, how did you discover this, uh, this story? The novel was brought to me by some producers that I've worked with a lot. And um, it was brought to me saying, what do you think of it? Read it. Um, let me know what you think you could do with it. And let me know if it resonates with you. And I read the book um, by one of our, you know, our executive producers, Robert and, and Kelly Pascuzzi. And I just, you know, I resonated with it. And I said, I think we can do something really fun with this. But at the same time, I think I see the message. And so we spent some time adapting it, spent some time trying to figure out how to make it a little more universal because the novel itself is a, uh, is really a study on healing for them, even though there's a thriller aspect to it because if it's about a murder. Um, and so we tried to, you know, take what's not necessarily seemingly an easy task, but you, you take it from the page, especially from real life, and you bring it to the screen and you, you know, you try to fictionalize it and at the same time, you know, still have the heart of the same story. So what was, uh, what was actually fictionalized out of this uh, real story? There, well, there, there was think... at least the ravine part. That, that was <laughs> yeah, <not. laughs> yeah, the ravine is there. Um, but knowing you know, the location, um, the, you know, the, uh, the families, every, everything about it was based on a real, you know, the real uh, drama. But um, really, the moving it to New Orleans was the biggest sort of, you know, uh, movie, movie uh, uh, fictionalization of it you know, turning into a movie because we wanted it to be um, a little more, uh, uh, not magical and not mystical, but a little more universal in terms of, you know, in terms of how people come about, you know, um, and deal with these big problems. So the action was real, the inciting incident was real, but the idea that where they are is part of the healing um, and really the Joanna character was really sort of what was built into it. Now, the, we're, we're from, from the book that, because uh, um, I'm not sure, but you kept it into the movie. Is is the religious overtones? Or was that all from the book too? Yeah, the book. See, and I'll take a step back. The book itself was really a healing process for uh, Robert and Kelly Piscuzzi. They wrote it because, um, and the, you know, uh, Mitch and Carolyn are, are kind of their, you know, their avatars, and they wrote it as a as a healing process. But they really relied a lot on their on their personal faith. And I wanted to make sure, and Eric Dane in particular wanted to make sure that what we were doing is saying, okay, that's great. But how do we make it something that, you know, it's not specific, but it's more universal. And so the, the spirituality is there. But what we try to do is make it more focused on, you know, how, whatever you believe in is what pulls you out. Whatever you, uh, whatever you feel you lost, you know, you can find again. And again, being in New Orleans and Joanna being someone who uh, can feel and see was really, again, how we tried to move it in that direction a little bit more. You know, the idea being that it is something everybody can take a look at. Absolutely, absolutely. Tell tell us about this uh, cast of yours because this is an all star cast. You're, you're you're not you're not talking about uh, no names. <laughs> in your film. Oh yeah, no. Well, I mean Eric is perfect. And, you know for the role, he's he, you know um, as I've I, I've often said, he he's so understated and he's so great for it. And you know and he's such a he's such a throwback actor. I mean you look at him and you're like you think that he's you know for, you know uh, from the fifties or the sixties or something, but really. You know he's he's uh, he's a very understated modern guy, um, as as evidenced by his new his new work. Um, but then also uh, also with you know Terry, she who was our emotional core. You know everybody's seen her in comedies, they've seen her, but she is such a, a, a uh, such a great actress, first off. But just she was so emotionally invested in it that between the two of them, I just had these really great you know the, these pillars that we could bounce everything off. And then we found Peter who really resonated with the role. And he really wanted to make sure that everything he did playing, like I said, uh, I said, he's not really the antagonist, but he is. Um, but playing that role, you know, the idea is that, you know, you don't humanize someone who does something evil, but you try to let people understand why someone would even feel like they had to do it. And so between the three of them and their skill and talent, uh, it, it was pretty incredible watching them work. Now, of course, uh, you have to bring in another cast uh, to the, for the flashback scenes. Could you, could you talk about that? Yeah. Oh, you mean the younger the younger cast? Yeah, the younger cast. Yeah, well, that was, that, okay, that is a great question because it took us forever to find the right people. And, you know, I love, you know, Sam and Kelly and, and you know, all the girls and the, and the little guys and, and, I mean, just everybody involved. Um, it was, that was the fun part of casting. You know, again, I, I've cast a lot of movies and, um, you know, uh, especially, you know, I've said, I do a lot of action movies and you're really looking for a type. You're looking for someone who is, uh, propelling the plot with the kids you're looking for someone who not only has the emotional 
maturity, but also looks like the people that they're portraying, you know? And so it was, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was difficult to find, fun to look for. And then the kids had to then really base their performance, not on what they wanted to do, but on what Peter was doing on what, you know, what, De you know, uh, uh, you know, Mitch was doing, you know, uh, 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 Eric was doing, excuse me, you know, um, and the idea is just that, you know, they pulled it off. They did a great job, but that was all, they're all local cast. Everyone was down, down South. Wow. That, that is great. Now, what, what, one, one more thing, because, uh, you know, it's a major thing here on a film, because as an indie project, you don't actually expect uh, someone to, you know, do, do a lot of special effects or anything like that. Right. Tell us how you pull off the ravine scene. Oh well, you, okay. you, you didn't really throw a car off of me. Oh yeah, we did. In fact, we planned to throw two. Um, <laughs> and here, you know, again, with my action background and working with a lot, and I've I've worked in New Orleans before, so I've worked with some of the, a lot of my career. I worked with 10, 15 years before, but um, we had found the right location. We had worked out the gag. We had made sure that you know, uh, uh, environmentally, that everything was taken care of in the vehicles when they fell. We had a big pulley system put together where you were actually going to sling the car off. They'd come in and put these great big casters in the ground and the whole thing. And it was perfect for it. The only dangerous and difficult and maybe, you know, uh, iffy part was that the edge of the ravine would crumble. But then the day before it poured rain. And so when we got there, it was just thick and mud. And so we couldn't drag the car. <laughs> so it was like three, four hours before we could finally get the car moving. And it was just puttering along. Now, again, we had a couple of cars for this. The whole rig was, you know, top notch. But just, you know, the, the environment didn't cooperate. So we finally threw the car over and it worked. We just said, forget it and put everything else away. So we only threw one car off the edge. But it was a big endeavor. I mean, it, that, was, that was a whole separate shoot unto itself. Well, hence, hence the, ti the title of the movie. So. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, hey, thank you uh, very much uh, for uh, telling us about the, uh, the magic behind the, the ravine and the story behind it, too. It's a very touching film and uh, everyone should check it out, especially, you know, to learn about uh, more about the healing process and forgiveness is it, the main, main lesson. Right. The right. Fantastic. I really appreciate it, Gig. Hey, thank you very much, Gail. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it.